I figured this way. Uh, I'm 75. If I have another 10 years and they want to zoom up that road when I'm gone, let that guy suffer. I told him, he says, I'm not giving you any money. You want it, you do it, and I get it. I said, fine. Are we ready? Yes. Um, we're ready to go? We're ready. Thank you. Okay. We're going to call the Planning and Zoning Board um, meeting to order. Today is July the 18th, 2016. It is 7 o'clock. And we will have a roll call, please. Mr. Vinson? Mr. Carr? Mr. Parker? Here. Mr. Geolosis? Ms. St. Arnold? Here. Mr. Seaman? Here. Mr. Haas? Here. Ms. Protos? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, the first application, number 16-55, has been deferred to the August 15th, 2016 meeting. So we will go to application number 1662, LDC Amendment Article 13, Section 226.00, amending the number of alternates for the Board of Adjustment to be consistent with the Section 12 of the City's Charter. And I guess we'll hear from the City, please. Uh, before we begin, I just do need to read the quasi-judicial announcement. Um, so both applications four and five um, are quasi-judicial in nature, and since this is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Planning and Zoning Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity, at a quasi-judicial hearing it is not the Board's function to make law but rather apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the Board is required by law to find against the applicant. Would the applicant please stand and raise her right hand so that we can swear you in. Do you swear from the, tr the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are there any others wishing to speak here this evening? And with, and with that, this is a application that the city sponsored application to amend the land development code, uh, specifically section 2206 of the ordinance. And essentially that section of the ordinance deals with um, alternate, well, B1 deals with alternates um, for the board of adjustment. It has come to the city's attention for the chairperson of the BOA um, doing some research that that section of the charter states that there are two alternates should be appointed to that board uh, to vote in the absence of regular members. At this point, the land development code only has one alternate, so the city is considering or has prepared this amendment to essentially change that section of the LDC to be consistent with the charter with section 12 of the charter. And so attached is the ordinance that shows that change in the language. And with that, staff really doesn't have anything else to present other than we're recommending approval of this change. Does anybody have any questions for staff? Ladies, Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak? <laughs> <laughs> you have to stand, you have to raise your hand and be sworn Give in. Your name. You'll need to be sworn in, please. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Name and address. Laura Whitney, 844 Bayshore Drive, Tarpon Springs. My question is, is there an order of alternates? I'm an alternate now, so who would be called in the event one of the board members would not be available for a meeting? The alternate that is seated now, which is yourself at this point, would be the first call, and then the new alternate that the board, if the board chooses to go forward with this amendment, whoever they appoint to that other alternate position will just be another alternate to sit on that board in the event that there's not an, a quorum. So it's just based on seniority? Correct. Well, not really. At this point, it's your alternate one, and this person, the next person that's actually going to be appointed if the board, if this goes through with the board, would be alternate two. So there'll be a one and a two. So whoever's in one goes first, and then if you're not available, then we'll call alternate two. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions for her? We're good. 
Anybody want to make a motion? Or you want to discuss it? What do we want to do? I so move for the recommendation. I think we'll all Second. Agree. Roll call. Ms. Protos? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Did you need the uh, the uh, number, number 16-22 <coughs> uh, in that motion? You know which one it is. Okay. Okay. The next application is application number 1663, LDC amendment article sections 25.04 and 25.17. We'll hear from staff, please. Okay, this um, actually arose out of several different requests by um, folks in the public to amend some of the uses that are allowed within some of our land use categories. Specifically in section 2504, which is a conditional residential mixed district, um, that's an area, we have an area out here, and actually the Jesse Burke law is in this land use district. There has been a petition that, or there will be a petition moving forward to request a community garden on that location or a potential community garden. The board hasn't decided that that's where the community garden's gonna go, but since it's been identified as one of the potential locations, um, we would need to amend the land use category to allow for that community garden use in that land use district because that land use district does not recognize it. It's very interesting. This is a little bit more intensive of a land use district. It's meant to be a mixed um, residential district where you've got some, um, uh, multi-family type uses that are allowed there as well as single family. However, in R100, which is probably our most restrictive single family use, community gardens aren't allowed use by right. So you could go in, you could come in if you had a piece of R100 and say, I would like to establish a community garden. And right now you could permit it. Under this section of the code for this land use district, you can't have that same ability. So because this particular district is a conditional district, it's a district that a lot of the uses that are not straight single family residential require a conditional use, staff is recommending for community gardens, if, they, if somebody wants to establish community garden, they would need to come through that, com that conditional use process, which would allow this board and the board of commissioners to decide if that community use, if, if that community garden is a compatible use with the surrounding neighborhood. So it puts those controls in in the hands of the BOC to determine if it's a use that's appropriate for that particular piece of property, that specific piece of property that is zoned the CRM, uh, C, the C, that zoned CRM. So that's what's the first portion of, of this is actually requesting is to allow for that community garden use on, as a conditional use under that district. Currently, it's not allowed for as a conditional use or any type of use in that district. So that's the first piece. The second piece, which is in 2517, which is the industrial restrictive district, we've been approached by um, a charter school that is interested in going into a building in the area um, over off of Live Oak, potentially. They're still doing their due diligence on that piece of property. Right now, um, schools of general education are not allowed in that district. So once again, staff is, at, has, is asking to have that, allow, that use put in as our allowed use list under the conditional uses. So that school, we can evaluate any school that potentially is going in through that conditional use process. So if it's not compatible with the uses that are around it, we at least can, can evaluate it during the conditional use process to determine whether it's compatible or not, ask that question. So that's what, why staff's asking for that. The other use that kind of fell out um, as a result of an attempt to come into compliance with the RELUPA legislation, which is the Religious and Institutional Persons Act, was um, commercial recreational uses. We actually have a gym right now that is in the IR district. It's a CrossFit, which is very common. CrossFits like to be in industrial areas because they need big warehouse space to do the type of um, exercise program they do. As a result, uh, all the community assembly uses were pulled out at the time because we were having issues with religious per with with religious institutions wanting to go into IR. Staff feels that in this particular case, 
putting commercial recreational uses back into the IR district and allowing them ver via the conditional use process allows the board, again, this board and the board commissioners, the controls they need to determine if those are consistent. CrossFits have shown that they are a consistent use within the residential district. They don't have any negative impacts in a resident, or, sorry, in a current, in a um, industrial district. They don't have any overflow or impacts. So as a result, we want to provide this board and the board of commissioners the opportunity to be able to approve those uses under those conditional uses, both the, the School of General Education and the commercial recreational facilities, which are, again, would be more of the CrossFits. I mean, the Anytime Fitnesses, the SNAP Fitnesses, they're not looking to go into the IR district. They're very happy in a commercial district, in a highway business district, or that type of thing, because their, their particular membership is pulled out of those you know, drive-by type thing. CrossFit's a different type of um, thing. And, and other things that could go in there is if you had somebody who wanted to do an indoor wall or they wanted to do you know, indoor bungee jumping, we've seen a, a variety of different recreational type of uses that are all done indoors. So you don't really know that they're actually in the building unless you either frequent the business or you happen to see the sign or the advertising for the business. So this would allow for those types of flexibility, flexible uses in that IR district. And where our IR is located, it would be appropriate for us to look at that at a conditional use and say, no, this is really more of a very industrial corridor. We need to, you know, not allow that use here. But maybe where there are, we have places that are IR that are actually adjacent to your highway business district, maybe that's more appropriate in those districts. So it's just providing a little bit more flexibility in our land development code in these particular land use districts for these uses that people are interested in actually pursuing. So that's that's the genesis of this particular application. I can answer any questions that you that you might have. Questions from the board? <coughs> I have a question about the gardens. I mean, are they, I, I'm still not quite clear what you're asking for. So if you're in a residential area, they're saying if you want to have a community garden, they could grow corn or something like that? Or in, in this particular residential category, this conditional residential mixed, which actually we have some of it just down here from this particular building right along Ring Avenue. There's a couple other plate pockets of it in the, in the city. Um, that Just in that land use category, you are currently not allowed to have a community garden. Now, you can have your individual garden, grow it with your, have it with your house or with your, well, with yeah. whatever other use that you have on that property that's allowed in the land use. But you currently cannot have as a use by right on its own a community garden. So that's what the city is seeking to allow that to happen if this piece down here is allowed for that's the old jesse burke property if that piece if the board decides to go after that piece this amendment is necessary to allow them to establish a community garden there civic uses can go there but specifically community gardens are identified in your land development code the only land use they've been assigned to is the r100 district so at this particular time requiring them to have a, a come back and have a conditional use will give this board and the board of commissioners control over what that design is going to look like for community garden what types of things that are going to be grown there now this is a very small piece of property it's not going to be some massive agricultural operation you can't fit it there what they're talking about is doing raised beds so there'll be space between those raised beds so they're going to be limited in the amount of these raised beds that they can get on that property Okay, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not just because we're going to dig in the ground and they're going to put in their little pots. It's actually going to be a little bit more elaborate where they'll have these raised beds. And they, their, their plan at this particular time is to even have some handicap accessible beds, which is kind of an interesting concept. I'm kind of interested to see how that, how those work out as well. So those are the type of things, but they still would have to come through that controlling process of the conditional use, which lets us put the conditions of control, like hours of operation, you know, you know, how's water going to be serviced to the site? How are we going to deal with ADA compatibility? You know, all those concerns that we may have with development of a more commercial type use on a residential piece of property. Ideally, in this particular situation, you've got this community building right down the street from that property. So some of the things that you would normally pr have to provide at a community garden, you actually don't, you won't need to because you'll be able to come to this building and use a bathroom. You'll be able to utilize the parking lot here. You'll be able to utilize some of those things. So they can actually provide less of that. But by that conditional use process, we will set the parameters. This board and the board of commissioners will set the parameters if that, that property is chosen um, for how it's going to be developed and utilized. 
under that conditional use. So do we then have a say on how the design is that the, each time they come to a community wants to do a community garden, they're going to come to us with a plan to show us what they're going to put there? They'll have to because they're going to have to come through that conditional use process like we did with the daycare and like we did with um, the school that we just we allowed down on um, the academy at the beach that we allowed um, in the medical complex. You know, we had them tell us basically what they were looking to do and we put conditions on their approvals based on what we felt as a group here. I mean, the staff recommends it, but obviously you can amend whatever conditions you think are more appropriate or recommend conditions. And we basically put those conditions on that we think are most appropriate to protect not only the use that going in there, but also the surrounding uses, because it's not just a use that going in there that they're just allowed by right. They actually are asking you permission to do a specialized use. You are giving what's called a special exception you are providing them an opportunity they wouldn't normally get under the zoning category. So that gives you the right to further scrutinize that, ask for site plans, which you generally get with um, conditional uses, ask for design standards and that type of thing. So you'll see some of that come forward if this passes and if the Jesse Burke property that's down here is actually um, chosen as that site for community garden, because the idea is they want to they want to prototype that community garden, that first one that they do, and possibly expand it to other com other neighborhoods if they're interested in across the city. Now, that may require additional changes to the land development code, but at this time, we're just looking at the one particular land use category where we feel there's the most viable site at this point in time. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Two, maybe three questions. Okay. All right. Does that conflict the community garden uh, concept, knowing that the city has wanted to dress up this area coming into City Hall with hopes of people building uh, new homes, and you're getting the, uh, the uh, I call them condos there on the corner. Mm -hmm. Does that conflict with that uh, zoning? Well, it, it you've got two different types of zoning. One side of the street is that special area plan, which you're talking about the eco village uh, projects coming into that special area plan. On the other side of the street where the Jesse Burke property is located, and a matter of fact, that cottage was moved from one side of the street to the other. That actually is the conditional residential mix. It is not in the special area plan. So it right now allows for residential uses and it allows for this board and the board of commissioners to approve some conditional type uses usually attached housing requires you guys to review it um some some types of um semi-detached and other uses are are allowed in that district but it has to come through the conditional use process right now so we're asking to add this so it's not in direct conflict with the request and the intention of this area but it's a different use than what was envisioned when the special area came forward. I see this as a step. They showed on uh, the Sunday morning program, there's a beautiful uh, residential development right out of Washington, D.C., on the Virginia line there. Beautiful, expensive home. But it's called the farm development. And behind all these homes, there's a big farm, and everybody that lives in this development has their own garden, they're raising chickens, they've got cows, and they said it's becoming a new concept in the United States in development where people can have their own produce, they go for their eggs and everything. We don't have anything like that. I think, I don't even think we have land in Tarpon Springs left to do something. But that's something maybe we need to look into while wait for a developer to come in. This was on the Sunday morning program, every Sunday at 10 o'clock. If you want to go, you go into their program on the computer and see the uh, developments that they've done. It's very highly successful. Successful. They're doing three in Illinois, two in uh, Alabama, and I think there was uh, one big one going. They're getting ready to do out west because this is the way and the norm that the American people are going to go now because of health food and health reasons. But like I said, these homes are not cheap, and you pay to have this uh, farm area, and you, uh, under their code of this development, everybody works in there. It's really, uh, uh, it was very interesting to watch, and I see this 
that this comes in the tarpon, but we don't have the coffee left for tarpon being a step into something. Well, you have you have two different actual trends that have been going on in the country for uh -huh. about 20 years now. One is urban agriculture. People are, are trying to reconnect with the with the with with local produce. The other thing is the local produce first movement, which is pushing, you know, the use of farmers markets, that type of thing to get local produce into the restaurants and into the schools and into people's kitchens well, that word. is locally produced. So it's local first movement along with urban agriculture. That's, those and there's, are the words they use. Yeah, and there's a variety of different ways that you can you, you can utilize this. Community gardens go back to the Victory Gardens during yes. World War II really, and it's they were really an attempt for folks to grow some of their own food to offset the war, the issues that were, the situations that were going on with rationing during the war. But they've become a resurgence really often in cities. Now, Tarpon doesn't have the same type of blight and things that you see up in some of the northern cities, but this has been a very productive and useful thing. Albany has done a lot with um, basically their pocket. They end up being pocket little community gardens where local people in the neighborhood kind of adopt a piece of property. They work that property communally, and they share in, they share in basically the rewards of during their growing season. Same thing in Youngstown, Ohio has done the same thing. And there's, there's all kinds of different examples all over the country. They do it in Georgia, and I think it's a very so, successful, good idea. So you are correct. There, there are opportunities. You you are also correct that we're going to have some difficulty here in Tarpon if somebody wants to come in and do some of that because we don't have a lot of property where we have green fields left for somebody to cut up property into the type of sizing that you would need to do what's like a community um, service organization where they do um, a portion of your homeowner dues or that type of thing are actually taken out in work instead of actually paying in money you pay in work and time into a farm there's a lot of csas that do that they're actually a live work type situation where you work on the farm and you get a you get a portion of what you receive as your share from the farm all right like if on bay shore if you had a lot of property could you do it up there in an r100 area currently yes we're going to do uh <laughs> and let me ask you one more question Can, will they be able to sell some of their produce on that piece of property is that or does that require something else in this that's going to require someone else some, something else um in this particular case there is no allowance for them to sell directly from that piece of property they would either have to go to another commercial location where they can actually re do retail sales or they would have to don't like they could donate the food or, or give away the food on that property but they couldn't actually derive a profit from that property now they could take it off off site we had a farmer's market they could um gr you know sell in the farmer's market they could sell in a business um they could sell directly to winn dixie or to Publix if they're willing to take the produce okay on orange street across from the uh tarpon uh uh thing that restaurant on the trail tarpon tavern there's a big lot there could someone put a community garden in there and let themselves in a business district or do you have to come back here and put an attachment to it this? would depend on it would depend on what's actually allowed on that piece of property you're in the special area plan there so we'd have to look at the uses allowed in the special area plan i don't know that community gardens were envisioned for that special area plan because the end idea of the cs of the cra was for community redevelopment for economic development but i'm not saying that it's not something that we can't look at and provide for another opportunity if the board is interested in doing that but it's something we'd have to do a little bit of research on I know that that parcel is definitely in the special area plan, so this amendment wouldn't affect it. It's in a different section of our land development code. It's Appendix B versus Appendix A. I think it's a wonderful idea, the community gardens. They're they're really thriving in St. Pete and Camp. Excellent. We're going into business. Any more questions? Any more questions from the board? We'll entertain a motion. I move uh, for approval of number 16-63, uh, Amendment Article 2, Sections 25.04 and 25.17, Residential Mixed District, Industrial Restricted District to allow certain uses by conditional use. Second. Second. 
Any further discussion? Well, Ms. Protos? Yes. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Ms. St. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. All right, and it passes. Over three, Mr. Keller. Does anybody have any staff comment? No staff. have a meeting in August. No staff comments, and the answer to that is yes. We yes, because I think it is, uh, where, where did I see it? The tarp and turtle will ha has been deferred to that meeting, to that meeting directly. But also, um, that was only because the, the agenda was already ready when they when they didn't get their plans to us on time. There's also a couple other projects that potentially could make it um, to your August meeting. We're waiting on um, responses from the applicants at this point. But. So I'll entertain um, a motion to adjourn. So moved for adjournment. Second. Okay, we adjourn and it is now 725. All right. Sorry, the last development that they showed on TV was magnificent. It's a big yeah. movement right now. Get a lot of Oh, I was. But they've been you and that girl for years. Oh, yeah. But I was, I know in well, France that was big that. and um, in England yeah, and Holland. Holland, it was really big. Switzerland, Copenhagen, But this one right out of the air, the home, you would, it's beautiful. I was amazed at the chicken coops. They don't really make one decisions. Yeah, they get pretty interesting. They get very elaborate, too. Our problem here is we have raccoons. I know. Yeah. So, well, they wiped out Sarah Panties, but he remedied that. Yeah. Yeah, he got my chicken coop, actually. Yeah. After the slaughter, my wife did Parts everywhere. They bring snakes too. Yeah. Snakes. I can handle the back. Tell your husband hello.